Alright guys, welcome to this video tutorial. My name is Rudolf and this time around we are going to consider bubble sort. And the bubble sort we know is the type of sorting that checks the indexes of elements in an array and after checking it goes ahead and swap depending on the condition that we are going to give it okay now if if you've not watched the tutorial on the algorithm go and watch that tutorial on the algorithm before you come and watch the coding aspect this is the coding aspect of the video whereby we are going to write a code for the swap to okay so that our elements will be sorted in either ascending order or in descending order okay so first of all we need to have a array whereby we are going to get the element inside okay so we have an array and this array has no size okay after that we need a folder uh, I mean a variable to help us with the swapping because remember bubble sort cannot just swap them at once it first needs to handle one of the elements to a temporary variable and move the next element into the first element and after that it will take again from the temporary variable into the second index okay so i know if you've watched the tutorial on the algorithm you really understand or if you really understand how bubble sort works then kudos okay so i need a temp variable to help me with a swapping now that we have our declaration of variable and array we need to take the size of the array okay we need to tell the user that how many elements does the user want to sort sorry so to do that first of all we need to prompt the user to do something so in java system out uh, print line then i will go ahead and tell the user to enter the size of array okay so the user is now supposed to enter the size of array now at this point we need to accept input and you know in java before you can accept input you need a certain class called the scanner class okay so we are going to import the scanner class from java library so we'll go ahead and say import from java now when we go to java there is a certain library they're called util okay now when you go to util we want to import the scanner class so import java.util.scanner now after importing the scanner class we need to create a new instance of that else we cannot use it okay so to do that we say scanner then the object name is input okay because new scanner okay and there should be a system in all right so now we can now go ahead and use the input we can now collect input from the user all right so what we are going to do next is now we've prompted the user on line 8 to enter the size of the array so therefore we need to now take the size of the array on line 9 okay so now we are about to do that now remember in case you want to declare an array and give it a certain size okay what we will do is first of all we declare the array let's say i have an array of this is just an example okay int array or int arr and this int arr is an array now if i want to give it a size okay what i need to do is i need to initialize it to a new instance okay so int array equals new int then i will put in the size of the array in here so i'll put in a size like five over here okay now what this means is this array which is called arr is going to accept five elements okay again this array is going to accept five elements now knowing this let's go ahead and accept the size of the array by allowing the user to input it into the program this time around we don't want it to be fixed we want the user to enter it into the program by him or herself okay so how to do it first of all remember we have an array here already which is int a okay so i'll just call a okay now a equals new int okay 
now let's say we are giving it a size i can put in five over here okay because i have a as an array declared over here and now i can give it a size of five but this time around we don't want any size for the array we want the user to input the size into the array so what we'll do is we will give the input over here as input dot next int over here like so okay so this will allow the user to enter the size of the array that he or she wants now I have the user being able to enter the size of the array what I need to do next is I need to allow the user once again to enter in the elements that the user want to sort okay so with that we first of all we have to prompt the user to enter the elements into the array so system out print line and I'll prompt the user to enter element into the array okay so this is a prompt to the user to enter element into the array now that we are telling the user to enter those elements then we need to go ahead and accept the elements okay and with this because it's an array we need a for loop for that okay we need a loop to accept those elements so as the loop keeps looping then the arrays or the elements keep moving into the indexes as the user enters them into it okay so i'll use a for loop like this and what i'll say is for int i equals zero that means this loop is going to start from zero i less than the array dot length okay so the size of the array will be over here okay the length of the array array dot length then i'll increment it one after the other i plus plus then i'll give a body for my for loop like so okay so now we are taking in the input now this input that we are taking is going into the array that we have on line 5 over here okay so i'll call the array and what i'll do next is i'll set the array equals input dot next int like so okay but this is not going to work for me because remember we are using a for loop to loop through the array so we need the index with the array to complete the tag so i'll put in the index of i over here and the work is done so this will loop a number of times by the length of the array then the user will enter those things into the array so now we have the element being entered into the array now the person has entered his or her element we want to show to the person that these are the elements that you've entered before we go ahead and sort them okay so what we need to do first is tell the user that these are the elements that he or she has entered so system out print line then you say these are your elements okay so these are your elements that you want to sort now after displaying to the user that these are your elements then now we go ahead and print out the element to the user so because this is an array we need a loop for that for int i equals zero we are dealing with array first index is zero i less than the array dot length incrementing it one by one i plus plus okay so now we are about to show to the user the element that he has entered so we are going to print that out system out print line and we are going to keep in the array all the inputs that will go into this array over here we are now printing them out over here okay with the index so i here as it loops then i will terminate that okay print line spelled wrong let me spell it correctly print line okay now let's go ahead and run this program to see what we've done so far so run this program and enter the size of the array okay so i'll go ahead and enter the size of the array like three now enter element into the array i'll take 12 78 and my favorite number three okay so now 
these are your elements 12 78 and 3 okay okay so now we've entered element into the array and we've displayed the element to the user now we have to go ahead and sort the element okay so what we need to do is tell the user that these are the elements after sorting okay so again system out print line then i'll go ahead and say something like these are your sorted element okay element all right so right now we are about to sort the element and with the algorithm that we did in that tutorial we need two for loops to do this okay and an if statement all right so what we're about to do is a first for loop so for int i equals zero okay then now i should be less than the array dot length but this time around minus one okay because the array dot length if it is five it should be minus one so that four of the elements will be sorted and one of the elements will place itself automatically okay so array dot length minus one and i'll increment it one by one okay then don't forget to give your loop a body all right now this is the outer loop now i need the inner loop to loop through the elements so again int with a different variable j equals zero now with the same trend j less than array dot length minus one again then j plus plus all right now again i have to give body the body for this inner loop okay so that is the body for the inner loop now i have the two loops ready to perform a tax okay so what i'm going to do next is i need an if statement over here to do the swapping okay so what i'll do is introduce my if condition and what i will do is give it a body quickly so that i don't forget myself and indent it nicely okay so now this is the logic over here if the array with the index of j which is zero okay is greater than the array with the index of j plus one if this is true then now the temp variable that we created over here we are now about to use it okay so what we are doing is now the temp variable is free so we have to assign the first element to the temp variable so that the first element too can be free so i'll say temp equals a with the index of j which is zero okay so now i've assigned a with the index of j any element there to the temp after assigning the first index to the temp variable then now the first index which is a with the array of j the index of j which is zero is now free okay so since this is greater than this we want that to move over here and this to come here you are supposed to watch the algorithm video which is part one okay so what i'll do is now a with the index of j which is zero is also free for now because we've given that value to the temp variable okay so this now becoming free then we can now give this a with the index of j plus one to this free man here okay remember a index j is free on line 25 it becomes free on line 25 because we assign this to temp and it becomes free when it becomes free then we give this a with the index j plus one to it now okay so i'll give that to it now now when i give a with the index of j plus one to a with the index of j this also becomes free okay and when it becomes free what i can do is now i can give the temp variable or the temp value to this because this is also now free okay so i'll say now a 
with the index of j plus 1 is also now equal to the temp value okay so this will cause the swap to okay okay all right so now we are done with the swapping and this is the block the ending block for my for loop and after this video I'll go over again so in case you didn't understand this part just be cool I'll go over again for you to understand clearly okay so this is the block the ending block for the outer for loop so I'll come behind that block and what I need to do is I need to print out the element okay I need to print out the element for the sorted result so what I'll do is I need a for loop for that again because it's an array it needs to loop through the element so that it will print them out so for int i again equals zero okay now i again is less than the array dot length and again i incremented one after the other okay so after this I need to give my for loop a body then now I give the user the sorted element so I'll say system out print line then I'll print out the array with the index of I then all the results which has now been stored in the outer loop will be printed out for them someone is calling me let me pick up the call and I'll get back to you soon okay so that was Prince calling and what I need to do is terminate this and print line again spelled wrongly okay so it's print line okay so now my program is ready for the sorting to occur let me go ahead run this and after that I'll explain to you one last time okay so I'm running my program and running 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 I think it should be ready by now all right enter the size of the array okay so I need to enter size of the array let's see if the array is with a size of five now this means that I can be able to input in five elements into the array now enter elements into the array so let's I have some numbers that I want to sort okay numbers like one two three four again I have something like thousand then maybe 23 67 and the last number my favorite number 3 okay so now when I press enter first of all it will display my element to me these are your elements then after that it will sort them out in ascending order so these are your sorted elements 3 23 67 thousand 1234 okay so that's it for the bubble sort and again let me go ahead and explain the codes to you one last time okay so first of all what we did is first of all we declared our array with no size then we have our temp variable now we imported the scanner class and we created an instance of that class okay so that we can use it after that we prompted the user to enter the size of the array so whatever the user will enter will be into this array which has been declared over here okay now after the size has been declared or stated we go ahead and prompt the user once again to enter elements into the array so because it's an array and we are taking in a lot of input into the array we need a for loop for that okay so we use a for loop then whatever the user will input with the help of the looping over here in the array it will store into the array after that we display the element to the user okay for the user to be sure of the element that he has entered that indeed these are the elements that I want to sort so doing that is an array again and we need a loop precisely a for loop to print out the element to the user I mean the element that the user entered now after that we need to now cause the swapping to occur okay so you tell the user that these are the sorted elements and we need a two four loops for that and after that we need an if 
statement to do the swapping and this is what the if statement is about now this j over here will start with the index of zero okay so if a with the index of zero is greater than a with the index of zero plus one which is one then it should cause a swap over here now the swap means that we have a temp variable which holds nothing so we assign the first value to the temp variable when we do that this first index now becomes free okay so when it becomes free then we can assign the second one to it when we do that the second one also becomes free then we take the second one and assign the temp which the zero gave to it and assign it to the second one on line 27 over here after that we use a for loop to print out the result to the user okay so that is it for this video tutorial and my name again is Ridolf or say Kwame you can do well to subscribe to my youtube channel code Africa and get more video tutorials on Java bye